All right, so we're going to go over kind of the uh, the build process for creating one of these um, Pi carts. Basically, it's it's taking a a Pi Zero. Um, so this is actually the Pi Zero W. So it's the new the new Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled version of the Pi Zero, and jamming it inside an old NES uh, game cartridge, which we have right here, and basically making a, um, a little micro console out of it. That's going to have some USB ports for um, plugging in uh, USB controllers as well as an HDMI output and a power input. So let's kind of go over the basics here of what was done to get to this point. Um, first off on the case itself, um, I did have to do a few modifications. Basically there was there is a lip you can see here. Uh, there is a lip where the, the cartridge pins actually would normally sit. And so that has to be taken off in order to make this work. So just using an X-Acto, uh, Exactly with our hobby knife, I kind of squirted a few times and used a pair of pliers to snap it off to make it so it's nice and flat through here. Um, then I had to do that for both sides, both the top and bottom of the actual uh, cartridge here. And then I basically found a, uh, a model online for um, the edge of the cartridge so that when you, instead of, some people basically, you know, stick like the USB ports and the HDMI on the edge and they, they hot glue it down. That works, but I don't think it looks very clean. Uh, so I went the route of finding this online, and basically what this does is it snaps in here to the to where the cartridge goes, and allows you to basically uh, plug in your uh, HDMI, your power input, and then three USB ports from this particular uh, USB hub. So this is the Amazon Basic uh, four port USB hub. So it's got three in the front, one in the back, which I won't really leverage at all. But uh, this thing's about six bucks on Amazon, and works perfect for this build. And so what we did is we basically just uh, used a pry, a pry tool to pop off the, the housing here. And um, it actually slides, the PCB slides directly into this uh, 3D printed um, housing here and makes it sit nice and snug. I still did hot glue gun it inside here to keep it secure. And one thing I did want to mention on this um, 3D printed part, so the one I found on Thingiverse, although it works really well it, for this particular cartridge, maybe it's maybe it's just this, this cartridge isn't like standard size, I'm not sure. It was a little bit too big. Um, I had to basically reprint this at 98% scaling. I had to scale it down 2% and reprint it for it to fit properly. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't close on the sides when I, when I put the top of the lid on. So I had to do that. I also modified it to where the one I printed here actually doesn't have this lower lip uh, by the HDMI adapter. So again, it was just too tall and I couldn't get it to close. So I did modify that a little bit, but it's easy to do within any slicing software, so no big deal. But as you can see, once it's installed in the case, you know there's the there's a PCB from the the USB hub. It sits in there really well. Uh, it doesn't wiggle at all, so it's nice and sturdy. And the only modification outside of pulling the housing off I had to do was this LED right here. So as you can see here, uh, there is an LED indicator on the top of the the housing. Well, that's too tall to work with inside this cartridge. So I basically just uh, took a pair of pliers and and bent that guy down um, just so it would not hit the top of the, of the cart there. So that's the, the basic, uh, main basic modification I had to do to kind of get things to work, um, at least I, I thought. Um, I am still planning on doing a, a power button and LED indicator for this as well. So you'll see kind of how I put that together throughout the course of this video. But basically, initially this is my layout. I was like, okay, this is perfect. I have, you know, the USB hub up front, I have my power, my HDMI, which goes to the uh, mini HDMI on the Pi, and then the Pi doesn't have you know full-size USB-A ports, it has these micro USB ports. And I didn't look close enough because basically how I had it wired here, I had my USB hub uh, going to this top uh, mi micro USB port using one of these mini um, OTG adapters. They're pretty slick. Uh, basically, so you just plug this directly into the micro USB. So I'll kind of get closer so you guys can see that. Again, pretty neat, pretty handy. And then I had my power cable coming off this, this right angle adapter um, going directly to the housing that we talked about earlier. So I thought this was going to work great. I didn't have to really do any modifications to the case and all the cabling fit perfectly. But my issue was is I didn't pay attention to the fact that if you look on the Pi itself, the Pi Zero, um, let me get this to focus here. So this is actually a dedicated power input, and then this is your USB hub, your USB input. So I had it reversed. I basically have my power 
um, on this one and my USB hub plugged to this one and the Pi wouldn't boot up. I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't boot up. So it looked closer and I just didn't look close enough at the, at the board itself. So this layout's not going to work because of the way I had um, the cable routing. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, basically I'm still going to leverage you know this USB from the hub obviously. I still have to plug that hub in. I'm not going to use the OTG adapter. I'm also not going to use this right angle adapter because I have to have it on the top and obviously I'm going to I'm going to hit this other uh, plug-in location if I do that. So I went with a standard straight ink, straight uh, micro USB and so that's going to go directly in the top here. All right. And then um, the only problem is if I do that, if I have it set up this way, um, I'm going to have issues with this plug with the using the OTG adapter with this uh, this standoff that, that you put the screw through to attach the top of the case. Um, once that's complete, I'll probably just leverage some double-sided sticky tape to um, elevate and secure the Pi W uh, to the cartridge right in that same location. So no different there. And um, I have tried other things. I have tried kind of like moving these things around to you know to position it differently, but it, this is the easiest way as far as like the cable management goes, as what from what I found. I'm also going to figure out some way to put an LED indicator and maybe even a power button um, with the built-in script to shut down the system um, somewhere over here, and so I'll include that in the video as well. But so next step is basically stripping this and going from there. All right, so I have the initial part of the wire stripped off. I don't know if they did that. There we go. So I got that guy taken off and basically I stripped, stripped the main um, jacketing off. And so what you have here is you have your, and I have this shielding up and around uh, the actual wires are exposed. And the shielding you can just get rid of. So tear it off and dispose the shielding to get to the actual wires. And then we just strip roughly about an eighth of an inch, um, you know, a few millimeters off of these wires here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we have all four wires here. Um, I have them stripped and ready to, ready to start soldering. And uh, basically we have, uh, starting from the top to bottom, this is actually the numerical ordering you'll see with the USB pinout chart, which I'll post here at the top of the, picture, the, top of the video. Uh, basically we have our red wire is number one. That's our five volt in. Um, two is white. That's one of the, the, data, the data lines. Uh, three is green, another data line. Then four black here is ground. So one, two, three, four. I have uh, these, I got one of these at Adafruits, basically it's a micro um, OTG adapter. And basically what I can do with this is it's a, it's a micro USB on this side. And then this is a standard USB, USB A uh, male plug. So you can, it can go directly in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually solder the wires from this cable directly to these, these pins here. You guys can see that and see if that works. It'll save me some time with having to strip and solder another wire to it. So let's give that a shot. All right, so first I'm just gonna tin, tin the wires here, put some solder on them. And basically as a way to kind of help me out Remembering which is which, I numbered the pin layout on this uh, on this USB that I cut off here, and so if you ins again these these are going to go down, okay. So I'm going to insert them this way, and when inserting from that direction, um, you can see the numbering. So from the from left to right, one, two, three, four, okay. And so just to make it easy for me, I'll I'll number those. One, two, three. And one thing to quickly mention before I start, I do have some heat shrink on here already that I'm going to use um, after I solder this. So make sure you put that on beforehand or you won't be able to get it over. So pretty straightforward, but now I'll, 
I'll test it before I pull the heat shrink over, but it looks pretty good. All right, so just powered it on. I'm gonna do a quick test here to make sure things are running okay. All right, so um, our controller works. So we know we did it. Okay, we know we wired it okay, which is great. So we'll go ahead and clean things up. Probably use some hot glue to kind of secure those wires a bit better, and move to the next step. And here's just another close-up of the, the pin layout on these um, micro OTG connectors, just so you guys can see how it's set up. It's pretty straightforward. But again, from left, from right, right to left, it's one, two, three, four. When facing this direction, this is the top of the uh, micro USB connector. And there's just a quick look at the uh, clean job using some heat shrink and some hot glue. And now it's not going to bend at the terminals itself, so a lot more secure that way. There we have everything secured, um, everything nice and shortened, and using some black hot glue to secure everything in place so it's not going to move around on me, but nice and tidy. Next up, wire in some uh, a power switch and LED indicator. All right, so in preparation for installing the hardware button um, on this on this case right here, um, I'm basically configuring the the wiring for the button itself. So we're going to do two. This is two steps. First, we're going to get the button in place and the uh, the script that has to go along with it to install the Pi, and then we'll add the uh, LED indicator. So first off, uh, just to kind of go over the pin layout. So on the Pi itself, we're going to be basically tying into pins uh, five and six. So five is actually uh, GPIO three. It's a data lane, and then six is ground. And so all we're actually doing is using a button to basically bridge these two points. And so I set this up um, using just a breadboard here just to test it out. Basically, again, I have the the uh, GPIO3, which is actually uh, pin number five right here, this white one coming to this uh, piece of the breadboard here. Then I have my ground on this brown wire going over here and then I have uh, just a momentary but switch button bridging the two. And so basically what I'll do to test it out is issue a shutdown command or a, halt, a shutdown halt command on the Pi. So I'm going to go F4 and I'm going to type in sudo halt and that basically puts it like into a low power state. All right, and then my indicator, so the screen one's off, and the, as soon as the green indicator goes off, basically it's now like a low power state. So just testing that this works correctly. Um, again, no script installed right now, just the, the button itself. I'm just going to toggle this button, and my indicator light pops on, and the RetroPi basically boots back up. So our button works, and I'll go ahead and take a picture and zoom in so you guys can see better uh, what that looks like. But now on to adding the LED indicator. All right, so now we're wired up for the LED, and the only difference is, um, you know, two things. So basically, on pin one, two, three, four down, which is actually uh, pin eight on the board here, um, this is GPIO 14. This is one of the serial lanes, and so I have this red lead going from that to the positive lead here on this breadboard, and that's going down to a resistor and then to an LED, and then I basically just have this uh, jumper wire going from the existing ground ground I had in place down to the negative or the, you know, the, the shorter um, part of the LED here. So um, basically I have it turned off right now. The LED is off and I had that, I did that same thing. I did the sudo halt command. So if I hit this button here, my activity light pops on and also the LED lit up over here for my power indicator. So this is the basic wires, uh, wiring kind of setup. And I'm gonna clean it up and utilize the actual button I'll show here in just a second. And here's a close-up picture of everything in action. All right, so the next thing to test this out is we need to actually install the script that tells the Pi to um, shut down and turn on when you press that momentary switch. Now, I'm not going to show that pro the process of actually doing the script. It's really, really easy. Um, here's a quick little... Uh, you know, screenshot of what the script looks like, but the process to this can be found on YouTube, on you know any web search. It's really easy to do. Um, I use the 8-bit junkie method, but there's lo lots of ways to do this, so go ahead and find the best way for you. Now on to the hardware. All right, so just a, uh, once the script the script has been installed, um, this is just a quick test to verify that the power button does in fact power it down and power it back up. So you can't really see the screen here, but it's on the main retro price screen here. 
Uh, this is a different setup. This is basically my, my, power, my LED indicator it is right here, this little red button here. So I'm going to press the button. Whoop. And the screen just went off. Um, active lights going off. Let's see. Give it a few seconds here. Boom. LED just went off. Active lights off. So now, and it has no signal on the screen, so totally off. Hit the button again. I'll go ahead and show the screen this time. And my LED is on. But anyway, the Pi is booting back up. So, good to go. Time to start soldering. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and solder on, um, on some, some pins uh, to utilize for the power and LED switches. And I'm just leveraging you know, some of these breakaway connectors. And I, I cut off uh, two rows of five. I don't need quite that many, but uh, just in case I ever wanna use some of the other ones up here uh, down the road, I'm gonna go ahead and put five on each side and that should give us all we need. And with these, they basically, the long side just drops in and then uh, we'll solder them on and snip off the excess and then solder our wires directly to the pins we need to. So, pretty easy. All right, so we go ahead and, go ahead and solder these in place. And just note, I, you know, typically you would actually have them turn the other direction, um, have them go this way, but I don't want the longer pins because I'm afraid I won't be able to close the case. So I'm gonna do a reverse here. All right, so soldering done there, and then now we are gonna go ahead and snip these to get a little bit shorter. Okay, so I thought it worked. So now they're, they're short enough where they shouldn't interfere um, with the closing of the case or the bottom clearance, so I think we're good with that. And so now I have the waters, the uh, wires, <laughs> the waters. Now I have the wires soldered onto the pins, and um, they will tie into both the switch and the uh, LED. All right, so everything wired back up to the breadboard to verify my my soldering job was correct. And as you can see, there's a reason that we use this specific pin for the LED indicator because when it's in a, halt, a low power state. Uh, if it's plugged in, a normal, you know, off of like a 3 or 5 volt would still light up, and yet you don't want that if it's powered off. So, let's go ahead and test this guy out real quick. Okay, LED went on, XG lights on, and the screen is booting up. So, our soldering job is correct. Again, the LED is up that I want. Now, time to attach the actual switch. All right, here we have the actual button that we're going to use. Um, basically what this is, it's just a small momentary switch that has a built-in LED. And so looking at the pin out here, um, basically, so on the LED side, you have the, the longer of these two, um, these two wires here is the, is the positive, okay? And then when the, the switch itself basically bridges momentarily, uh, you know the top and bottom pin the the LED is completely independent of the switch itself as far as the wiring goes and So how, how I'm going to have it set up over here is I'm going to uh, bridge the uh, Bridge the ground here on, on these two and then I'll have the positive LED here and then the uh, momentary coming up from this point here, so uh, You can see it wired up as a test over here on this breadboard but I'm going to go ahead and wire this into the actual Pi Zero here. And be back in a sec. It all wired up. You can kind of see where the leads go there. I'll move that so you can see where it connects. So now let's get it attached to the case. So this is the general idea. It's a uh, power button going to sit over here. And um, basically I'm going to put a hole um, in the case, you know, right about here. So it'll just barely poke through enough to press the button and see the LED indicator when the power's on. So let's go ahead and make the hole and go f and get that set up. And so I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bit here. Um, as you can see, it's just big enough to uh, make it so that the upper part of the switch pops out, but not the actual casing around it. So that way it can almost sit flush with the actual case, but you can still depress the button. So that's what we're going to utilize right there. 
can see with the uh, 3 8 inch bitch, it made a nice clean hole, but the bit, um, I might have to go up a little bit larger because it's, even though the top part pops through, it's just, it's recessed a little bit too much. So I'm going to use a, uh, a file here, a, round, a rounded file, to widen the hole a little bit, just so it sits kind of flush with the case itself. Alright, so I, I widened the hole just a tiny bit with that file, and again, like, I couldn't use the next bit up, bit size up because it was just too big. And now, so with the push through, so yeah, it's nice and snug, which is what I want, and, um, you know, <laughs> and basically it's going to sit almost flush with the case, so you can see right here. If I can get it to focus correctly. So it, it really doesn't stick out very much. There we go. So barely sticks out on top of the case, which is perfect. Okay, so now that we've done it, what we're going to do, um, I'm just going to use some hot glue basically and kind of position the button in. It actually is pretty it's snug enough where I can press it without any you know securing it, but I just don't trust it long term, especially with my kids. They'll punch right through that thing, so I'm gonna secure it with some hot glue on at least two of the two of the uh, corners here. And just to circle back on something really quick, um, make sure when you use the hot glue gun that you don't get it anywhere near like the insides of these little rails here, these uh, these openings, because if you do, your button's not gonna be able to press, and that's what happened to me. So I had to clean it out, uh, got it working again, but. Pain in the butt, so just verify that there's on all four sides there's these little openings that the hot glue can get inside. So just keep it on the rim and you should be fine. Alright, you see here I got the uh, hot glue applied in actually in three locations. So it's going to be hopefully nice and stable at this point. Let it dry and see how it works. Alright, well, everything is wired back together, so let's hit this power button and see what happens. There it goes, very nice. And then we'll pause it until it gets to the uh, emulation station and then give it a shot to power down. Just to verify the shutdown script is working correctly, press the power button here. And there it goes, into shutdown. So it works perfectly. Let's verify the light goes off, yep, awesome. All right, so that's the, uh, the full build out video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I did go ahead and replace the sticker with a better one. It's not as washed out, so it looks a little bit nicer. But basically, any questions you guys have, hit me up in the comments, um, or check out the, the link to my project blog in the, com in the uh, description of the video. I have a lot more detailed steps and pictures in that, so feel free to take a look there. Uh, again, thanks for watching, and until the next project.